Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this particular basket. There are two different sizes within this one pattern. There's a small and a large just like you see but what is different about these baskets is that they're lined with another color. So this actual fact when you go to do this there's two baskets but then at some point the baskets are, are gonna be put together and then the finals are going to then be put around. So what I've done off camera is that I'm I've done the small one already which I can see here and what we're gonna do is that this is gonna be a base and I wanna tell you a little bit about the stitch work here in order to in order to keep these going and around in a complete circle. So here is the base of this and I can use a, a needle to bring this closed if that bothers you. So what happens is that I like to make sure that I put a stitch marker in right where it tells you to do it in order to get bigger. So we're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and then once we get to the stitch marker which you can see there's, there's a definite line. We're then just gonna go and continue to circle until you get to a certain height. You're going to do for both sets of the baskets um, like this is the liner and then the outside are gonna be both done the same and they're gonna sit within each other and then once they're sitting with each other we're going to then put them together with our hook in order to make it go all the way around. So it's a really neat idea. So I wanna tell you a little bit about the base here. So you're gonna notice like hats they always have like incremental increases. These do too but they're always not at the same spot. So that's a kind of an odd thing and the reason for it is that you get a more accurate circle if, the, if they're not at the same spot every time. So as we work through it, today's pattern you're going to notice that where we do the increases in these circles will change and it's only to do it so that you get a nice round circle. So I have the interior liner already done so it's the same thing as that we're about to do with the outside and then at some point in this tutorial we're going to put these together and then we're gonna finish them off putting them together at the same time. Now in this pattern what's gonna happen is that the uh, small stops in round 12 and then it jumps over to both versions here. So what we want to do is that we want to think about how we're gonna do this. So if you wanna do the large version you have to continue to do your growth for 13, 14, 15 and 16 in order to get the larger size that you see here. And it's amazing it's only four rounds but it is significantly different. So once you, you can do either or I'm gonna do the small here on camera and then you can follow these uh, using the instructions because I think by that point you'll get it. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna carry on and make the height which is three inches then for the um, small and four inches and the height is from the base here of where you're going to grow it up like this and then we're going to put the baskets together and we're gonna put them together and uh, just do a finalization and so that they are one solid unit when you're going to work with these. So without further ado we need a, a small crochet hook. It's actually shocking for this yarn. It is a four millimeter and I think that is a size, I can't remember off the top of my head, it is a size G. So we need actually a small crochet hook in order to make this so you have a nice dense basket and I think that you'll love it at the same time. So it'll take a little bit to um, make this project because the hook is smaller but then you don't have any gaping holes so that you can put this basket on display and you don't have to worry about anything thing falling out of it either. So let's begin four millimeter size G crochet hook today. Okay and I'm going to be doing inner or outer basket for the small size. It's both the same until you get to a certain point in today's tutorial. So let's uh, begin and we are going to chain two, one and two and in the second chain from the hook I want you to put eight single crochets into that same stitch. So this will start turning that middle circle. So we have go one, and it may take you a bit of getting used to this small size hook with this thick yarn. So you have two, that's three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Once you get to eight then you just join it to the first one. If you're not sure which one it is just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. For me I've been crocheting long enough that I know where that is but if you're never unsure just count backwards from this point and there is the starting of your, your basket. So let's move along to round number two. Round number two, we're gonna chain up one and in the same one that you just did the join you want to put in two single crochets into each one of those and into that stitch and then into each one of the ones going all the way around. So you're just doubling your, your diameter. So two single crochets into each all the way around to see at the end of this round. When you get all the way around you're just gonna join it to the top of the first one that you did. We're gonna do this every time and I'm gonna give you the instruction to get you started and I want you to know how to join. 
Okay, so here at the end, okay, if you're not sure and you're thinking that you got one more to go, you don't. So this one here is leaning into this stitch here and it's part of that stitch. I know that it looks like it's gaping right now but once you join it with a slip stitch, everything pulls together. This is where people go wrong in hats. See that? So if you're not sure, if you physically count, you'll notice that there's 16 here. So let's move along and I'm going to get you started on each one of these revolutions and I want you to fasten off or sorry, do a slip stitch every time that you get back to the start in order to keep this tutorial moving forward. So round number three, let's begin. We're gonna chain up one and in the same one that you did the join, I want you to put two single crochets in there. So here is the repeat pattern throughout this entire round. The next one is gonna be one into the next one and then the next one is gonna be two. Okay, two single crochets. Okay, so the next one is gonna be one and then the next one is gonna be two. So please do that all the way around just like you see. So let's just join it to the top and of the very first one that we had started with. Okay, so that was round number three. So let's begin. You can see it still looks great. So let's uh, move on to round number four. So I'll show you how to get started. So we're gonna chain up one and then what we're gonna do then is that in the same one you did the join, you're gonna put two single crochets in. So here's the repeat pattern. So there's gonna be two in one and then the next two are by themselves. So just one single crochet into each of the two and then two into the next one. Okay, do you got that? So the next two are by themselves. One and two and then the next one has two. Please do that same pattern all the way around for round number four. Okay, round number four is complete. I've already done my join. So let's begin round number five. So we're gonna chain up one and in the one that you did the join two, you're gonna put two single crochets into that same one and now the next three in a row, okay, one, two and three will all be singles by themselves. So one, whoops, I dropped my stitch and two and three are by themselves. So the next one is two into the same one. So one and two and then the next three are by themselves. So please do that same pattern going all the way around for round number five. So let's begin round number six. Remember I told you that the incremental amounts will, will differentiate. They will not be in the same spot. Well round number six is that same example. So we're gonna chain up one and the first two stitches are gonna be one single crochet each. So one and two and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one. So what this does is that it helps it prevent from getting a spoke look on your project by changing where it grows. So the next four, so here's the repeat pattern. So you got two into here and so this time then uh, it's gonna be four in a row so of just single crochets. Last time it was three. So there's four and the only difference is is that it just, you just change where that spoke location is. So the next one then has two. One and two. Okay, so if you get it, so the next one is four. So one, two, three, and four and then the next one has two. So please do that all the way around. You'll notice because this round starts off not putting two right in the very beginning that you'll end up with two single uh, crochets by themselves before you do the join. So let's continue for round number six. So let's begin round number seven. So round number seven gets you to start off the same way that you had been before. Again this is just alternating to make the rounds look like they're not uh, spoking out. So chaining up one and so the first one where you did the join is gonna be two into the same one and then it's gonna be five single crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and five and so the repeat pattern then goes, this is five, uh, the repeat pattern goes then as two is into the next one. Okay, so two, so then you got five and two, five and two. Please do that all the way around. So now let's move on to round number eight. So round number eight is gonna stagger the beginning again. We're not gonna start off right off the bat with putting a two in the first one. So we chain up one and there's gonna be one single crochet in each of the next two. So one and two. So two are by themselves just like you see here and it's actually really quite easy and so there's gonna be two into the next one from this point. So one and two. So in this round here the repeat pattern is six are by themselves from this point. So one, two, th uh, this was going to be three. <laughs> three, four and five and six and once you get to six you put two into the next one to keep that growth going. So uh, one, 
this is a really tight stitch uh, because of the size of the hook. So it looks great. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. So there's six in a row and then two. And so when you get all the way back around just like you see here you'll have single crochets uh, sitting by themselves at the end as well. So and then you'll do the join. So that's round number eight. So continue along. See you on round number nine. So let's move on to round number nine. Nine goes back to the way it was before. So we're gonna chain up one and it's gonna be two single crochets into the first and then this time around it's gonna be seven single crochets in a row. Then two and seven. Continue to do that all the way around for round number nine. Okay number nine is now complete and now let's move on to round number ten. So round number ten we're gonna shift on where we get started on doing the uh, the increases. So let's uh, begin and we are going to um, chain up one and one single crochet into the first one like we normally would and then it says to do one single crochet in each of the next three. So there's gonna be three in a row. So one, two and three and then we put two into the next one. So one and two and now th this round here is gonna be eight single crochets and then two, eight and then do that all the way around just like you had been. So it's eight this time. So just start counting those out and I'll see you at the end of this round. So let's move on to round number eleven. So here we go. We're gonna chain up one and eleven's back to normal again. So two in the be very beginning. So one and two and in number eleven it's nine in a row and then two, nine and then two. Continue to do that for round number eleven. So now let's move on to round number 12. For the small basket this is the final growth round and uh, you'll notice that in, in the other basket you'll see that it is much smaller than what the original is. It takes all this extra distance for this basket to finally stop growing. So that you're thinking it's a little short at this point but in actual fact it does take that long. So let's uh, begin and round number 12 is going to be just uh, starting incrementally uh, a little bit down the way. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in the first and now the next four are gonna be by themselves. So one, two, three and four. So here's the repeat pattern for this one. So two into the next. So one and two and then ten by themselves. Then two and ten. Continue to do that all the way up for round number twelve. So I'm coming up to the end of round number twelve and I'm gonna join. So that's the last time we're gonna grow this and you can see it's working out pretty good. So you'll notice on, on the other one here we have a definitive line that appears here. I know it might be hard to see here on the camera but it gives a nice flat edge for the basket. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do in the back loops only in order to create this line and then we have to go a certain distance. So the small is three inches and the big one is four inches. So once we complete this next round you're just gonna go around and around and around. No more addition of it and you're gonna notice that it's gonna start curving around like it would on a hat because it takes time to stop growing things. So let's move along and we're now moving to both versions in the next round. So if you did the large version and you want to continue you do 13, 14, 15 and 16 on your own and then you'll pick up at this point here on what to do next. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna go into the back loop only. So you in a stitch there's always two strands. Okay so if you go into the front strand the big it's the front loop and you go into the other one it's the back loop. So if you go into the back loop what happens is that it creates that line. So you're just gonna work your way into each back loop as a single crochet all the way around and it will create that line but it will also create that bend in the fabric that you need in order to have this basket sit really quite nicely on your on your table. So with this round number 12 please back loop single crochet into each one of them going around. So when you get all the way back around you're just gonna join it to the beginning of the first single crochet. So here's the thing. Okay that's part of that one. So here's the thing. It says to place a marker so that you can measure the distance between uh, the, this part here going up. But there's a definite line that you can see. So you can either place in a stitch marker if you wish. So why don't we just do that just to satisfy this pattern. So let me just cut a piece of yarn here off camera. And what I can just do is that I can use that stitch marker. Okay so right where the, the line is right here. And I'm just gonna do that and I'm just gonna, it's just loose, it's just for me to put it in there so I can see it. So from this point forward I need to measure three inches for the size small. So if you can see the line like you can on this one here you can just measure it. So what I wanna do because this is the second one I wanna make sure that I'm gonna count the number of rows to confirm the outside one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go up to my living room just crochet for a while and I'm gonna get this one distance up and done. So both of them are matching each other so that they can sit inside each other. So if you're just finishing one then you'll have to go back and do the other one. Okay so there is your outside or your inside depending on what you were doing first. And then 
I'm gonna join up, uh, put these back together, I'll nest them and then I'll put them together so that you have them out. So this is what it kinda looks like at this moment. So I'll see you back here. So just single crochets uh, going all the way around. Make sure you chain one single crochet and then join, single crochet and join and keep doing that and you'll notice it will take a while before it actually starts to ball around, uh, bowl around like a basket. And I'll see you back here in just a moment. Okay, when I last left you I was working on the outside so I had already done the middle one first and then I did the outside and I just made sure everything is gonna match each other and I put them inside. Now when I did it originally I really didn't think that they were gonna fit inside each other. Um, I'm having kind of a rough day today so my tension's tighter than the original. So you wanna make sure because they are fitting together that <laughs> if you're gonna have a good day make sure you have a good day with both of them not just a crazy day on one day and easy day on the next. So now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna attach these together now because they're the same size is that the stitches will match each other. So what we want to do is that we want to join them together. So going into the first stitch, okay, just right there and going into the matching one on the other side pull through and single crochet. So you're just gonna work your way just all the way around and as you work your way around you're joining them together with the single crochet just like that. Okay, isn't that easy? That neat. So therefore you don't have any sewing to do. It's all just single crochet. So please do that all the way around for this round. So as they finish up it's looking pretty fabulous isn't it? It's a lot heavier than I expected it from the photograph um, because I guess I'm using two balls of the Bernat Maker Home Deck. So I'm actually really happy with it. I'm actually, um, it's pretty solid. Like it's actually pretty fabulous. I've, I've never done anything like this before so it's kind of a fun project and I think the, the two um, pieces working together really provide that strength that people love in a basket. I've seen baskets online where people um, kind of cheapen off on the yarn and then they kind of fall apart if you're not staging them properly. This one will not have a problem. It's nice and sturdy. So I'm liking that. So all the stitches matched each other so that means that my stitch counts were correct. <laughs> Thank goodness. And I'm gonna join to the beginning. So let's do your final round together. So the final round is a reverse single crochet going in the opposite direction from which you just came. You don't turn around the project though. You wanna go in reverse. Usually we crochet it forward like this. We're gonna go backward. So to do that we're gonna chain up one first and you're gonna go into the stitch right before it and insert in and then you're gonna pull through. Okay, you have two loops on the hook. Pull through. Let me just zoom in and show you what I'm doing. So to do the reverse just go into the stitch before pull through, you have two and then pull through two. Okay, so you're going in before, pull through, pull through two. It's a reverse single crochet. This is also called a crab stitch and this is providing a really unique look and thing. Do you see what it looks like? It's neat. Eh? So that's really kind of cool. I just uh, finished a tutorial um, already this afternoon of, of doing this on the outside. I also did a tutorial yesterday on borders of afghans also uh, using the same stitch. The crab stitch is really quite fun. So that's all you have to do is reverse single crochet all the way around. I'll meet you at the end of this revolution. So I'm coming all the way back around. Don't forget like the first one here has to be done and if you don't do it then it looks like it's odd and out of place. So what you need to do at this point is just, just kind of slip stitch it together. Now how you sew this is gonna matter on this particular stitch. It does uh, matter significantly. So just pull it up like this. So if you do it just conventionally of just kind of weaving in your ends you're always gonna see it. So you just gotta take your time and you just gotta weave it in and uh, try to do your very best and I'll see you back here in a second. So I put the loose end on a, st uh, a darning needle and what I want to do is just glide it uh, underneath the stitches. I don't wanna impede the edge at all. Just stay right up underneath. Just get it in there. So the trick is is that you can, this kind of yarn here is more like a cord. So you just really kind of want to just be patient with it and just kind of pull it up underneath and just watch this edge. Just watch that and then coming back in the other direction. Just again just bearing it in between the stitches. Don't try to impede it on the outside. So if you go back and forth three times in your project it'll never fall out to you. Uh, fill it, uh, fall out when you're going to use this kind of project. Nothing is worse than you giving somebody something and it falls out with the tails. So you just wanna kinda bury it in. So it's one, two and three and it's completely in. And I can cut right down to the project. So now I just gotta turn it over and make sure I have no loose ends on the bottom like so and this is my basket and this is really kinda cool. This is called the ColourPop Crochet Basket by Yarnspirations.com. I've never done one of these before so now you've gotten to see that and I hopefully that you've enjoyed that today and I 
we'll see you again next time. See ya, bye-bye.